Hey, I'm Chris from Pocket Insider. Um, today I had a chance to join the Vietnam Blockchain Summit 2022 and I meet two extraordinary people from DFG and J Square Capital, um, Mr. Jamho and Jenny Lian. Um, so, like, can you give me some introduction about yourself and also DFG and J Square Capital? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. This is uh, James, uh, founder and CEO of DFG. So I started this firm back to 2015. Uh, we, uh, they're slightly different than other VCs, so we don't raise outside capitals. So my family gave me $20 million to start at that time. So I decided to invest into a bunch of uh, crypto startups first, including company like Circle, uh, like Jax Brave, uh, and, and a few others. You know, at that time it's pretty early stage, so mostly about uh, exchange and other business. Uh, then start from 2018, uh, 2017, 2018, uh, we, we, we start investing into different layer one protocols, uh, including Polkadot, Solana, Nia, and Avalanche. And as you guys may know, Polkadot become one of the most important holdings in our firm, and we are very, very heavy and supportive into that protocols. And during the last board run, we also invest into a bunch of different applications, including DeFi, NFT, Metaverse, and uh, GameFi, and a few others. So, so far, we, we, we manage a billion dollars so far, mostly uh, cash, and DOT, and, uh, and a few activities, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the uh, CFI license business and infrastructure. And also, we, we invest, we have a portfolio over like uh, 150 different kind of portfolios. Yeah, thank you. If that Mr. Chona can 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 answer this question because um, um like recently you guys choose to um have the man scope of Polkadot ecosystem funding. So why you choose Polkadot? Okay, actually we come from different entities. Uh, I came, uh, yeah. Uh, I came from J Square, and uh, in terms of investment uh, in Polkadot ecosystem, recently uh, we did some projects um, like Cipher Mode. Um, and they are mainly focusing on some new emerging sectors like NFT, like GameFi, and some of the mass production level, uh, mass mass adoption level. Um, so basically, what what J Square th this is echoing with uh, what J Square focuses on because J Square where uh, kind of focus is more on the mass adoption for for Web3 industry. Yeah, maybe I can add a little bit on that from from our perspective. Uh, I think uh, there's two problem in the uh, protocol side on the infrastructure side. The first is that for the scalability issues. So it's been trying trying to solve this problem for for really a long time. Uh, from the very beginning, they, they say 2.0, and, and right now they, they, they do move to 2.0, and um, but they are not, you know, solving the scalability issue by by using the shading, uh, uh, you know, internally. But they are trying to solve this by layer two. So I know that Web3 increasingly is a very hard um, keyword in 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 cryptocurrency and also especially for the ecosystem. So do you think that um, Polkadot? has been did a great job in, in building Web3 infrastructure for decentralized application? Uh, yes, I do. I, I actually, the word Web3 is, you know, right now it's commonly used in the whole crypto industry. And if, if you search Web3 on, in Google, there are still diff, diff, you know, all, all kind of definition about it. So for me, Web3 is more like a, a decentralized uh, value network. So um, this is my definition of, of Web3. Maybe different people have different definition. Uh, speaking of how Polkadot play, in, uh, play a role into that, you know, in, into Web3 world, for sure, I think they do a good job in the past couple of years, especially on the tech perspective. So uh, as, as I said, you know, on protocol two problem is the key and they are trying to solve the much bigger problem here. And it, it takes, you know, time for, uh, for 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 the infrastructure to become mature, and they are on their way to 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 realize that. So what what so that that is obvious, you know, important to to the crypto industry. Jana, maybe you add something to that. Yeah, actually, I, I agree with you on this point. I, I just think that uh, Polkadot has actually laid a, a very solid foundation in the infrastructure level because it kept building uh, from from uh, its basic technology and to solve the scalability, interoperability, and 
and the safety, the security problems so far. And so, yeah, I, the, the answer is yes. It, it just lacks some of the, um, the chances or the opportunities to, to bring more mass adoption level, uh, the, 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 the upper layers to, to, survive, uh, to, to, to uh, thrive. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, so in terms of deficiency, um, do you think that Polkadot have any deficiencies um, that they, they, should, they should solve to be more successful? Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. There's uh, room to be improved, right? So I think, uh, obviously, there's two things. Um, you know, what I you know, notice in, in the Polkadot world could be improved. The first is about, uh, it's about really about learning curve. Uh, because if you take a look at Substrate, it, it's definitely amazing, it's great. But for single developers outside the crypto world to move into the crypto world, Substrate is very hard to learn, right? So the learning curve is very steep, right? You need to spend a lot of time to, to learn the whole language and the, learn the whole structure. Where else, uh, there's a few others like Cosmos and uh, it's much easier to learn. Uh, w w which means here we need to do more uh, education ad adoption for developers. So I think we are we are not doing enough here. We, we should definitely uh, do more. So this is one problem. The second is really uh, the second hurdle is really about the the entry barrier, right? Previously, people are trying to say, okay, if I, it's, it's I'm not I'm a non Polkadot project. I'm trying to move to the Polkadot space, but I have to you know if I want to be a layer one pair chance, they have to. Uh, when a pair can start, right? That 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 costs you some money, right? The economy, it, economy costs at the very beginning is very very high. If you take what Akala and uh, Mubi and Asta pay for a single pair chain, it's very high. It's not going to sustain. It's not going to be sustainable. But right now, I think it's it's much more reasonable, and we don't need to pay a lot of money to get get a pair chain start. So w with that, I mean, still we need to do more education and adoptions to project which potentially can go to the Polkadot ecosystem and say okay right now the cost is not as you imagine it's, it's much more reasonable and and you can still afford that to become a layer, layer one pair right yep. so this is this is really the second problem is about the cost i mean for these two problems the solution to to solve the problem is about education and and about the you know the do more adoption so we, we are definitely not doing enough we, we we should definitely do more on that um i just want to add on one point because Basically, I I'm, I'm on on it with James that the, the the key to the key to like make this ecosystem bigger is to bring in more developers and users and believers in this ecosystem. And the way from one point is to is to do more education and reduce the learning curve. And the other is to actually to bring. Um, to dismiss the gap of the misunderstanding of yeah. this ecosystem because a lot of people or a lot of Western people are from US or from Europe they still think that this project is under control of like Chinese or Asian investors so this is a totally misunderstanding I think yeah, yeah this is one thing that we need to let the world know yeah okay so like in terms of learning curve um, can you tell me about your rejection about Polkadot ecosystem and also the whole crypto space in, in the upcoming time? Yeah, I think more broadly speaking, in, in the crypto space, you, you know, it, it, I think the bear market will last for a much longer time yeah. um, be, be, because of uh, several reasons. The first is we can see the correlation between crypto market and stock market become US, especially US stock market become become relatively stronger these days, uh, which is great because crypto is being more mainstream. So this is great, but but clearly you know we are with with Federal Reserve being very, very aggressive, we are kind of entering into a recession. The recession usually lasts for like. A, Two, three, two years, maybe two three years. Then w within that period, it's very hard for for crypto to to have a bull market, right? So this is this is the fact. Uh, but I'm not thinking, you know, pe pe some people are too, you know, 
they are, they are, they are too. They, they say the bear market will last for four or five years, but I, I, I probably disagree on that. I, I, I think somewhere between later next year or, or the early 2025, or, yeah, uh, sorry, early 2024, then we, we may see some you know uh different view uh, you know different things happen in the crypto space where which may have the trigger to the bull market yeah. so uh, uh this is the you know the, the the first reason why we i think the bear market will last for 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 much longer uh the second is about uh crypto itself right crypto it have its own logic uh it's not simply copy paste but previous situation for it's usually two years of bear market, two years of bull market. Right? So it's 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 not simple copy paste. I'm saying this bear market will last for two years, but that's maybe uh, something like a, a reference that people can can take into consideration. And and the other thing I want to mention is usually there's something happening in the crypto market trigger the bull market, right? So in 2020, it's clearly DeFi summer. Uh, it should be it should be something like an application which can uh, which normal people ha can have access to right so in 2017 it's ICO people can participate in the ICOs in 2020 people can participate in the in, in the DeFi protocols and demanding getting reward for that so this is th there should be something trigger the the bond market that everyone have the yeah everyone have the you know ability to participate in, in, in this kind of the project or, or, or participate into it so that's that's the trigger so once we see that trigger and once we see more you know things have been developed on the, on the on the protocol side as i said before scalability issues individual issues can be solved or partially solved then we may have the next ball runs you know at a time so that's that's my only step like i i learned that um, beside the Pocket ecosystem you guys also invest in like numerous um, successful projects um in other chain so can you guys give the community some tips to to choose the good projects to to invest in thank you great question uh, <laughs> uh uh, I think uh, people still need to realize one thing. You know, if you building the project, you need to view the project from from different angle in different sector, right? So, uh, you know, for for example, it's a DeFi protocol. Let's say it's a DeFi protocol, then you know most people will care about TBL, right? So I calculate the ratio. You know, the the there's a billion dollar TBL there, but market cap is like a hundred million dollar. It seems to undervalue to me, right? But but the other thing is we need to take into consideration. For example, in, for the DeFi protocol, is you know why that's secure, right? Uh, what about the security, right? It, it's like a um. Is that is that the the, the, the the protocol secure enough that it's not being hacked, right? For example, for the mainstream ones like Uniswap, Aave, or make it out they are more sustainable because the security is much better. But for the other ones, maybe ten days later, once they get launched, they get a lot of TVLs, they get hacked, right? This is still very very risky. So security is definitely one thing you need to take into consideration. Yeah, the other is maybe how. You know, is a business model sustainable? If you have a billion dollar TVL, but with the APY like uh, two hundred percent a year, then it's not going to be sustainable, right? So, whether you create a sustainable business model is also another thing you need to take into consideration. But that's only you know a few um, fact that you know if people start to uh, building. Uh, you know, evaluating a, a DeFi protocol, right? So the, the game files, you know, AFT is made by it could be other fact influence the valuation of the protocol. So what what I suggest here is people really to, uh, you know, going to be more cautious and more careful, do more analyze when you make an investment. That's yep. that's my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I learned that um, entertainment, especially game, um, is very interesting investment space. So can uh, can Miss um, Miss can tell me? First? Yeah, yeah. I was just about to share some views on this point because yep. uh, from from a different angle. I think uh, from from my perspective in terms of the investment part, or if I if I give any advice to any of the retailers or. Um, the the cons the users who want to purchase something in this market, I think uh, we can focus on some of the points. One is um, region or territory. Uh, as we are now in Vietnam, I we in the last bull run, we really um, like 
gain, generated a lot of returns from investing in Vietnamese projects because because I, I see I actually see this market as a huge potential market and so right now um, what I am focusing on is the Vietnamese projects uh, including some like uh, Japanese projects and Korean projects and some of the Asian markets I think um, are are what are the territories that I think have huge potentials and this is one perspective and the other is um, as you mentioned GameFi actually GameFi 1.0 has already passed and we I see um, I see there uh, are still some opportunities on, on, on the game fight area in the future and we uh, and I well, what I view treasure more is from from the innovation side from they, they, they need to figure out new mechanism not only Ponzi or some of the very like um, basic uh, mechanism yeah and NFT is also an area that I'm re really like uh, promising yeah um, so like uh, the class question w would be very interesting question. So like, um, can you can you give um, the community know about um, like which projects um, bring you guys the highest price? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I think for the biggest reason for DFT is clearly Polkadot. So we've been very supportive to Polkadot in the very beginning. So uh, we we purchase start at a very low price, and we keep uh, purchase start on the second market. Uh, so uh, obviously this is going to give us the biggest return. We'll keep doing that. Uh, speaking of the other project, there's um. You know, Game Five Project in Vietnam also have very high return at the peak. Uh, for example, Seattle Arena, you know, and my DeFi Pad. Yeah, and a few projects we invest before, uh, they give us very high, uh, very high return. So I think uh, for people to, uh, to, to, you know, there's two ways of uh, making investment, right? So the first is really. Uh, low risk, low return, the second is high risk, high return, right? So it depends on the ability for people to kind of uh, recognize the, you know, the and how deep they can be involved in the crypto industry. If you cannot, if you cannot be very in, in, deep in, deeply involved, then I suggest you just choose main, main, mainstream ones to invest, right? You can buy Bitcoin, you can buy DAO, that's mainstream one. They are going to be there. They are going to be very promising, and this is going to, you know, work for the most of the people, right? Yeah. And if you are going to have the, you can tolerate uh, the the very high risk, then you can select in some uh, probably more promising, uh, relatively small project or early stage project to invest they may give you their much, much, much higher return so that's that's you know that's not a financial advice but that's why you know just uh, the, 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 the the analyze for 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 different ways of, of doing yeah. investment yeah. yeah basically we share a lot of uh, portfolios all together and the highest returns for J Square um, also, also comes from a lot of game five projects especially in Vietnam and so that's why I'm pretty um, I'm pretty bullish in this market and I I'm, I'm trying to find out or figure out more uh, adoption um, level products in, inside of this space right now yeah, well, that's really right really like. um, so um, I believe that this is the end of the interview yeah um, thank for your time to, for joining Pocket Insider interviews and um, see, see you later. Yeah. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you everyone. Bye bye.